It's time to leave the shade and walk towards the light. Many errors have been made throughout our moving lives. It's time to seek forgiveness and do that which is right. Then only can we see between us, you and me, the glory of Islam and its endless beauty. No matter where you're from, no matter who you are, when it's time to leave this world, we have... Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to this new episode of Unity, The Way Forward. I'm your host, Junaid Da, and joining me in the studio today is our Sheikh, Dr. Haytham Al-Haddad, the Managing Director of Muslim Research and Development Foundation, which is based in the UK. You can also visit their works on Islam 21C. Sheikh, if I could welcome you to the show. Hayakallah, Jazakallah khair, and welcome to all brothers and sisters watching this uh, episode. Thank you. Uh, in our previous episode, we looked at verses from the Qur'an, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to unite and not disunite. Furthermore, we looked into the benefits of smiling and the benefits of spreading the salam. Um, Sheikh, if I could ask you to shed some light on further evidences and proofs, please. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. In the previous episode, we started to speak about salam and we mentioned the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when he came to Medina. And the first time he was coming to Medina and the first address to the people, he was explaining his maybe constitution, you can say, uh, memorandum. He said, Ayyuhan nas of salam. Right. And we said that salam spreads love between people. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ said this clearly in one of the ahadith. He said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ In, in Hadith uh, Sahih Muslim, Hadith Abi Huraira, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ The Prophet ﷺ is this word, that you will not believe until you love each other. لَن تُؤْمِنُوا أَوْ لَا تُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى تَحَابُوا وَلَا تَحَابُوا حَتَّى تُفْشُوا لَا تُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى تَحَابُوا First, you will not believe until you love each other. Let, uh, let me just comment on this point. See, many people think that loving each other is a surplus. It is not a duty. Me, as a Muslim, I have to love other Muslims. Other Muslims have to love me. This is my right over them. This is a duty in the meantime. We have to love each other. لا تؤمنوا حتى تحبوا You will not believe until you love each other. Right. Subhanallah. Will not believe. It doesn't mean that we will become kuffar. Maybe it means that we will be sinful or we will not have the high grade of Iman okay. if we don't love each other. In the other hadith, the Prophet وسلم, said, Hadith Anas, when the Prophet وسلم, said, La yu'minu ahadukum hatta yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibbu li nafsi. One of you will not believe until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. We need to go back to these meanings. Many people think that these meanings only maybe certain groups talk about these meanings. Uh, these meanings are just a matter of admonition. They don't see the impact of these meanings on our social life or, or even on our political life. Those, and that's why Islam is a miraculous system because everything is linked together. Not only this, the Prophet wasallam told us that you will get reward in the Akhirah. It will not just help you to promote social stability within the, 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 the uh, society. No, it gives you hasanat in the Akhirah. That's why we mentioned the hadith when a person came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Assalamu alaikum, and the other person, then the Prophet ﷺ said, 10 hasana. The other person came and said, Assalamu alaikum, 20 hasana. The third person said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. The Prophet ﷺ said, 30 hasana. Mm. The Prophet ﷺ said, when you walk together and then you split and join again together, say, Assalamu alaikum. The Prophet ﷺ said, when you come, say, Assalamu alaikum. When you leave, Say also assalamu alaikum because this is not more deserving than the other one. Subhanallah. All of this emphasis on just assalamu alaikum. And we know that when you get into your home, you have to remember the name of Allah Jalla Either by saying bismillah 
and assalamu alaikum or even assalamu alaikum some scholars said is it even assalamu alaikum is enough and when that person came and he is started to talk to the prophet sallam without saying assalam the prophet sallam said uh, to one of the companions go and teach him how to take permission by saying assalamu alaikum wow. so imagine a society like medina or like any society that is spread salam between themselves so that l they live in love between themselves and they feel that they have to love themselves in the hadith the prophet sallallahu said la tu'minu hatta tahabbu then he said should i tell you about something if you do it you will love each other afshu salam baynakum spread salam between uh, yourselves and you know that from a sharia perspective the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam once came and there uh, were some Muslims sitting with non-Muslims. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Assalamu Alaikum. He meant Muslims, but he included everyone in this. Right. So this even can be said when, when in, in some societies where there are uh, some Muslims and non-Muslims living together, and there are Muslims sitting with non-Muslims, you can say, Assalamu Alaikum, and you can mean uh, Muslims. You can address Muslims. However, some uh, scholars said even non-Muslims, you can start by greeting them, but other than uh, the word Assalamu Alaikum, because Assalam here is the name of Allah Jalla wa Ala. They said because of the religious uh, nature of the word Assalam, it is a unique. It should be unique for for Muslims. Anyway, uh, the 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 point is, look at the way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam addressed this new society. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is in favor in bringing them together. That's why he mentioned the salam. And then after that, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, أَطْعِمُ الطَّعَامُ Okay. Feed or feed others. أَطْعِمُ الطَّعَامُ You see, no one, no society can be uh, socially stable if people are hungry or some people are hungry. That's why Islam took, put attention to this point. And in the other hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, it, he is not one of us who sleeps with full stomach and his neighbor is what? Sleeping hungry. Right. And you know, in, in hadith Abi Sa'id, when the Prophet ﷺ was going in an expedition and a person who did not find enough food and he was looking to the right and left, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَنْ كَانَ مَعَهُ فَضْلُ ظَهْرٍ فَلْيَعُدْ بِهِ عَلَى مَنْ لَا ظَهْرَ لَهُ وَمَنْ كَانَ مَعَهُ فَضْلٌ مِنْ زَادٍ فَلْيَعُدْ بِهِ عَلَى مَنْ لَا زَدَ لَهُ The one who have access in terms of ride, he should give it to those who do not find right. The one who have access in terms of food, he should give it to the one who does not have food. And that's why some scholars said it is encompassed upon us to feed others who do not find enough food outside zakah. Uh, just to add here as well, there's a particular verse in Surah Tawbah where uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the believing men and the believing women are awliya of one another. This is, well, this is so one of the meanings, one of the meanings of unity. Mm. We will come to that. The, the, the wilaya of each other. Right. And we will come to what Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned about this. But if we just uh, finish this point, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when he addressed the people of Medina, وَأَطْعِمُ الطَّعَامُ And give food others. You should not have one of you st uh, starving and others uh, spend their, their days and nights with full stomachs. So this is something that we need to observe as a Muslim community or even as a society, because here, وَأَطْعِمُ الطَّعَامُ The Prophet ﷺ did not say, أَطْعِمُ الطَّعَامُ between Muslims. If there is a non-Muslim living under the shade of the Muslim community, he should sleep with a full stomach. He right. should not be starving. It is not just at all to leave even non-Muslims who live among us to starve. And you know the, 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 the story of Umar ibn al-Khattab when he saw one of the people of Dhimma and he was devastated the prophet ﷺ said we did not give him justice right and the prophet ﷺ, then umar ibn al-khattab said that uh, the the bayt mal al muslimin the, the treasure the treasury should give the, him uh, a monthly salary or a monthly wage so 
uh, that all of these things, small things, but they have an impact on the social stability of the society, they have impact on the unity of the society, and they have impact on the political, uh, the, the, the political stability of the society as well. You can see any society that has no political stability if you go down to the roots of the, the root causes of this uh, political instability, you will find, uh, f first of all, social injustice. Right. Agree or not? Mm -hmm. Or you will find some hidden agenda. One of the reasons is the social injustice. So if we want to have political unity, then we need to make sure that the social stability has been achieved or is achieved. So that why, that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, And then he said, What has this to do with the social stability or, 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 or the political stability of the society? No, it has an impact because the stronger the relationship between you and Allah, وعلا, it means that you are a devoted Muslim. It means that you are not really caring so much of what is happening uh, on a dunya level. Right. So you can compromise on so many things. You can give up so many things. This is one thing. The other thing is, no, it is an aim for itself because the most important aim that we are living for is to save ourselves from the hellfire and to attain Jannah through the ibadah of Allah Jalla wa'ala. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, تدخل الجنة بسلام. He wants to remind us that all of these social activities, be careful. The key thing is what is to go to Jannah. And this is miraculous because this means that there is no distinction between dunya and akhirah. Right. See, all of this, we could we took it from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Let us let us just mention one more adilla if uh, time allow uh, sure. allow us. You know, in the other ayah, Allah Jalla wa Ala says, "Wala tanazau fatafshalu wa tadhabari hukum." Wala tanazau, don't have dispute among yourselves. Don't have disputes among yourselves. Otherwise, fatafshalu. The 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 scholars said fatafshalu means you will lose courage. Right. Wa tadhabari hukum, and your strength departs. Right. So, when you are together, when you are together, you will have strength. That's why um, one of the uh, poets, he uh, had a very nice uh, poem where he said, صوت الشعوب من الزئير مجمعة فإذا تفرق كان بعضا وباحي The voice, the collective voice of people will look like uh, the roar of a lion, the roar of a lion. If but I, if it splits, it will be just a dog like a dog barking. Okay, if I could just stop you there. Um, beautiful piece of poetry. Uh, we're just going to go for a short break. Stay tuned and we'll join you in just a few moments. Since Huda TV first launched in 2005, the channel has been striving to extend its broadcast to cover every corner of the globe. We're already live through satellite in the Middle East, parts of Europe and Africa, and via web streaming around the globe. Today Huda TV is pleased to offer glad tidings to its viewers in the United States of America. Huda TV is now available for broadcast on the Galaxy 19 satellite on the following parameters. Satellite, Galaxy 19 at 97 degrees west. Transporter, 28. Frequency, 12184. Polarization, horizontal. FEC, 3 over 4. SR 22000 
We're thankful to Allah that Huda TV's English programming is now available to all our viewers in America. And we promise you to bring you more upscale productions day by day. Tune in to Huda TV on Galaxy 19 right now. Huda TV, a light in every home. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. Uh, we were discussing a beautiful piece of poetry talking about the strength of, of, of unity and when we come together and when we are united, our voices are like the roaring of a lion. Sheikh, if I could ask you to continue on that point. Yeah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The, the, the poetry in Arabic, it says, صوت الشعوب من الزائر مجمعة means the, 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 the mass, when they shout together, it, it, it looks like a lion roaring. Right. But if they just shout every one of them alone, individually, then it will be just a dog that barks, mm. that has no value. That is the meaning. And if I might uh, just digress a little bit sure. here, you know, Ma'an ibn Za'ida, the, he was described as one of the dignitarians of Arab, uh, Arabs. Uh, they, uh, when he was about to die, he gathered his children and he gave them, you know, spears or right. sticks. Right. Yeah. And he told them first, put them all together, the sticks or the spears. And then he told them, try to break them down. They could not break them, of course. Mm. When you put 10 of them together, you cannot break them. Then he said, OK, now just take everyone and try to break it. So they could break them easily. Then he told them the very, a very nice uh, poetry and which became like uh, a, sa a famous uh, saying. He said, كونوا جميعا يا بنية إذا ترى خطب ولا تتفرقوا أحادا تأب الرماح إذا اجتمعنا تكسرا وإذا افترقنا تكسرت أحادا. He's advising, addressing his children. Be together, all oh my children, and don't split. Mm. You have seen those spears. When they were together, you could not break them. But when they split, they could be broken easily. Wow. That's a, a very profound one. Yeah. This is what we need to learn. If we are together, then people fear us. If we split, then we will lose our strength. In fact, the ayah says one thing which is quite um, uh, amazing and appealing. Fatafshalu, according to one interpretation, is you will become uh, coward. Okay. You will lose the courage, you become coward, you become a, a fearful person. And it is true. Look, some people by nature, even, even some psychiatrists, they said this, that some people, they are very, very strong along with one person. It doesn't mean, he doesn't feel that the other person is giving him aid, but it is just moral aid rather than the physical aid. Okay. They become very strong, very brave. But when they are by themselves, they are very... Uh, fearful. So, uh, uh, this we need to learn this. This is the first one. فتفشلو. Then Allah Jalla wa says, بريحكم. Of course, your strength will depart. We will, not have be, we will not have any kind of power. And that's why, you know, uh, uh, maybe we mentioned this in the beginning of uh, in the first episode. You know, the European Union, they are trying to come together as right. much as they can. Now, uh, we said that in the European Union now we have 27 countries. How many languages do they speak? Numerous. Uh, uh, yeah, numerous languages. At least, at least 10 languages. Okay. Uh, how many religions do they have? Many people say that they are Christians. We know that the Christians are of different faiths themselves. Uh, how many culture, background, ethnicity? They have numerous ethnicities, etc. Look on the other side, the Muslim world. Okay. 57 countries. They have one Quran. They have one religion. Mainly they have one language, which is, which is Arabic. Even those who do not speak Arabic, they know a little bit of Arabic. And they submit to Arabic. Yet, we failed to be united. This is amazing. And it is very shocking. 
the West knew the power of unity. And unfortunately, although we know it, but we could not achieve it. Right. So that's why, although it is a rational requirement, Allah Jalla is encouraging us and is commanding us to be united. And not only this, Allah Jalla is providing us with mechanism to establish unity among ourselves, such as what, such as what we have mentioned about as salam This is one of the mechanism to to achieve unity. Right. Again, uh, if we just carry on talking about the adilla, you know, Hadith al Nu'man ibn Bashir in Musnad al Imam Ahmad, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, al jamaa tu rahma wal furqa tu adab. Very sh- short statement, strong statement. Jamaa is rahma. If I could just ask you to, for the sake of the viewers, yeah. to translate. Jamaa is rahma. Unity is mercy. Right. This unity is punishment or adab or uh, difficulty or hardship. Very profound, short, to the point. Jama'a, being together, you will have rahma. Some people say, al to baraka. It is, whether it is, I don't know if it is hadith, but it is a well-known statement. al to rahma. al to baraka. The hadith says al to rahma. Rahma which means that the mercy of Allah Jalla wa'ala comes. Your enemies will be afraid of you. They cannot take you to, to, to take over you. So you will be protected, which is rahma. Right. And not only this, from Akhra perspective, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that the jama'ah, when you pray jama'ah, two, you will get the jama'ah, you, يعني, the, the explanation of the hadith, you will get the reward of jama'ah by praying two. But when you pray with three, you will get more reward. When you pray with four, more reward. And the bigger the jama'a is, the bigger the reward is. Okay. Which is another meaning of rahmah. Mm. Look at this. In, in, in some of the mechanism that Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us to achieve rahmah, he said uh, he did not allow to eat separately. He wanted us to what? To eat together in right. one place. Ijtami'u ala ta'am as the Prophet ﷺ instructed us to eat together. Uh, the, the very famous uh, story of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, he said, Ashariyin, the Prophet ﷺ said, in al-Ash'ariyin, those who belong to that tribe, the tribe of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, when they, have, uh, uh, when they go through uh, poverty and uh, decrease in, in their wealth, they put their wealth together and they distributed among themselves equally. Mm. Although some people took this as they said that is Islam promotes social, uh, uh, sorry, uh, communism. We say no, not communism, but Islam wants us in times of difficulties, we share the food because it is not fair that one person, as we said, sleeps with full stomach and the other person next to him, because he doesn't find food, he does not eat. With, he sleeps with empty stomach. That is not allowed. So the Prophet ﷺ praised those Ash'ariyin and he said, I am from them and they are from me mm. because of this sharing the food. This social meaning has an impact on what? On unity. And this is another mechanism to bring people together. Could I extract from that then um, what we're saying is that the backbone of uh, unity is justice. Uh, no, this is one of the backbones, th- one of the main backbones, because we might have justice, but uh, still people are not interested in uh, to be united. But from a Sharia perspective, the Prophet ﷺ is commanding us, the, the, the Quran is commanding us to be united. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Jama'atu Rahma wal Furqatu Adab. The, the, the statement of some scholars, Al-Jama'a is Baraka. Al-Jama'a is Baraka. That's why when you eat together, you share your food, eat together, then the Allah Jalla wa'ala puts Baraka in the food. Right. Here, just one point, a quick point. I don't know how we are doing about time, no, but sure. just w- one point about eating together. What does that mean? It means that we bring the food together and we take from the food what is 
less than our amount, our normal amount. And then we take again. If we want again, we take again. Okay. The Western practice, and in, in fact, it became like the modern t t practice now, which is wrong, is that when we, uh, when, be, when we buy food, every individual buys food by himself, right. and he eats by himself. This is wrong. We should uh, try to put our money when we are, for example, traveling in a journey or so, we should try our best to put our money together to buy food for everyone, according to the needs of everyone. And when we come to eat, let us put the food together. Okay. And it is true, maybe some people might not sh share uh, the, 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 the same plate, okay, with others. So take it from the communal plate or plates, okay, take what is less than your amount, as if you are taking in a spoon, less than your amount, and then take again. This way satisfies the meaning of sharing the food where the barakah comes. And look at it. Um, you know when you have, when you are eating by yourself and you have your plate and you are eating from your plate alone, right. if there is a minimum, if, if there is something little left, you will do one of two things. Either you will throw it or you will eat it okay. more than your... Uh, the, the, uh, the required amount. Yes, your normal amount. So this little amount that has been left that is uh, beyond your, uh, w w what is sufficient for you, this has been wasted. Right. On all cases. But if you, had you been sharing the food together, this can be consumed by others. This is the barakah of unity. So we've come to the end of this episode. Um, brothers and sisters, uh, I recommend you and urge you to take these practical advices and establish unity in and amongst your communities. Begin the smile, spread the salams, and invite people to eat and to share the food with you. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.